So when we're adding sound effects, uh, we have to make sure to connect our sound effects to parts of our code um, that sort of enable the sound effects to work. And so we'll look at a few of those, and then we'll go download the sounds, and then we'll add them in. Um, there are lots of places for sound effects that are not part of the code. Um, it's not really exhaustive. So if you have ideas for things that you want to do with sound that we don't cover right now, uh, let me know, and we could talk about how to add that into your, uh, your individual project. Um, but anything, any of the scripts that we have that are connected to uh, things that are moving or things that have that you might expect to have sound effects may have sound effects, and we just kind of have to look for where those are. So our player obviously probably has some sound effects that we could add. Um, so we can open up that scene, and if I click on the script here, what we want to look for is things that basically have sound in them. Uh, so sometimes these are hard to find, but uh, most of the time it should be pretty uh, clear. So here's an example here where uh, it says jump sound dot play. Uh, so most of the sound uh, lines in the code will look something like this. And basically it says here remove comments to play sound effects. These little hashtags in code are known as a comment. And it's something that we can do to make it so that the, that piece of code doesn't run. Um, and usually programmers use those to make notes. So for example, this is a note. Um, so this is an actual code here where it mm -hmm. says remove uh, comments to play sound effects. This is just a note that explains what's happening on the next line of code. On this line of code, this looks more like real code. It says jump sound dot play. But if we put a comment or a hashtag in front of it, that means that it won't run when we, when we load the program. So if we want that code to run, we just remove that hashtag. The other thing we have to make sure is that there is something called jump sound in the player hierarchy where the script is attached. And that thing has to have a play function, which uh, is going to be our audio stream player. So we'll look at how to set that up um, once we download some sounds. Um, so I'm going to add this back in for now, and we'll come back to this later. Um, and let's just make a quick list. I'm just going to open up a text edit and just make a list of sounds. So for the player, we have jump sound. And then we can just kind of scroll through the rest of the code and see if we see anything else that says sound. Here's another one that says death sound. So this is if the player dies or we lose the level. And I think that looks like everything. But if I want to make sure, I can hit Command F and search for sound. Oh, there's a land sound, so I missed this one. So this is if we jump and then land. And of course, all of these sounds are optional. Part of the reason they're commented out is to avoid errors before we add in the sounds. But it's also, you don't have to have these sounds if you don't want them or they're not appropriate for your game. Um, so let's see, we have four matches, but I think this, let's see. So land sound, jump sound, death sound. Oh, then this is just a comment. OK. So we have those sounds for the player. And let's take a look at some other things that we have in our scene. So our enemy might have some sounds. So let's take a look. So I'm going to open up this enemy script. And I'm going to do Command F and search for sound. So the enemy also has a death sound. It has a hit sound. And I guess that's it. OK. So we've got a couple sounds for the enemy. Let's see what we have for our rewards. OK, so the. Uh, reward has a collected sound. So items slash rewards have a collected sound. Um, I think that might be it for what we've added so far. So we may have more sounds in the future. But for now, I'm just going to make these sounds and then go over how to add them into Godot. Uh, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to save this because I'm just using this as a list. So I'm going to go back to the browser. And the thing I'm going to use this for, for this is JFXer, so I can generate my own sounds. But if you want to download uh, pre-recorded sound effects, um, you could use 
one of these guys, or actually I should add that another really good website for sound is freesound.org. Um, I'll add this onto the links here as well. This is if you would want to download like a sound that somebody had recorded, not something that you're synthesizing yourself. Um, but I like to use JFXer, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. And so I'm gonna start, I think I generated some audio last time. Let's see, oh, I just have the level start. So I'm gonna go through my list of sounds and just add these in here. So I'm gonna start with the player, start with the jump sound. And so there's a jump uh, default here. I'm gonna turn up the volume just a little bit. And so I can find a sound that I like. That's kind of fun. I might turn the frequency down a bit. That's pretty good, so you know, uh, for the demo purposes, I'm just going to go through these quickly. Uh, but you could obviously spend a lot more time tweaking and finding the perfect sound. Um, so I'm happy with this one. I'm going to click Export. And this is called Jump 5. But I'm going to change the name of this uh, to Player Jump. So I'm going to open another Finder window here so I can uh, edit these. I'm going to call this Player Jump. So that way I won't forget what these are. Uh, so then I have a player death sound. There's no like death uh, preset. So I could try like hit hurt or power up or random uh, or explosion maybe. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll make this a little bit longer. So something like that might be kind of nice. Uh, again, I would probably spend a little more time tweaking this, but I think this will be this will work for now. So I'm going to export this, and that's called Explosion Three. So that's not going to be very clear what that is. So I'm going to rename this to Player Death. So then we have the player uh, land sound is the next sound, um, and so this is also kind of like a jump, but I might want to go with like a uh, like a blip or maybe a hit. Something like that actually would probably be good. Okay, I think this one is good. The land sound, I don't want it to be super uh, loud. This is a pretty, pretty straightforward. So I'll just go with that. And then I'm gonna rename this one player land. Try to spell land correctly. So there's other sounds that the player can do, like there's a projectile sound and stuff like that, but I'm gonna ignore that for now. I'm just gonna add the things that we actually have code for at this point. Later on, if we add more features, we'll add sound uh, along with those features. Uh, so let's switch to the enemy. So we need a, a sound for when the enemy uh, gets hit, and we need a sound for when the enemy dies. Um, I think there, there should also be a, an attack sound, but maybe that's attached to the player. Uh, I'll, I'll make that and then we can figure it out when we add it in in a bit. Um, so for the enemy hit sound, this is when the enemy gets hit. Uh, we could try some more hit hurt examples. That one's pretty good. Maybe the frequency is too high. Maybe I'll try something a little more noisy. like that. OK, so we'll use that for now. Again, I'm just going through these a little bit quickly for the demo purposes. But of course, you guys can spend more time finessing these. So I'm going to say player enemy hit. Um, and then we have enemy death. So I might use like a random sound for this to see if I can get something interesting. Mm, that's kind of cool. That's pretty good, actually, for like a snake. Maybe I'll see. OK, I like that one. So I'll do that one. And I'll call this uh, enemy death. 
And then I feel like I need another one for when the player gets hit. Um, so let's make that, and then I'll figure out where to put it in the code later. So I'll do another hit. That one's pretty good. Okay, let's do that. Um, so this one I'll call player hit. Okay. So I just have one more sound if I collect an apple or a life. So I might actually have two sounds for that since I have two different um, items. Uh, so uh, let's go with the uh, pick up coin sound for the apple. I like that one. Might bring the frequency down a bit. Okay, I like that one. I'll do this one. So this one I'm going to call Apple Collected. And then we also have a life that we can collect. So we want to have a different sound for that. So I'm going to do a power up for that one. Whoa. Okay, that one's kind of good. Okay, I'll use that. Uh, so again, I'm just going a little bit quickly. I probably wouldn't stop here, but just for the sake of time, I'm going to go with this one. And so we'll call this Power Up Life Collected. So we've got a bunch of sounds ready. Uh, these are all WAV files, so those will be good for sound effects in Godot. They're all pretty small. They're all under 100K, or actually this one is 190K, that's okay. Um, so they're all decently sized. If you have something that's like 10 megabytes or bigger, that's probably too big, but other than that, you'll probably be fine. Um, so now that I've got all my sounds, I'm just gonna drag them into my audio folder in the Godot project, and then we'll go in and add them to the different components. Um, so that is pretty simple. We just need to go to each component and add an audio stream player for each sound that we want to play. Uh, and then we just have to mat make sure that the name of the audio stream player matches uh, what the code says. Um, so let's open up our Apple, and let's open up I don't have any uh, life objects in this scene, but I can go to my scene components and go to the life object. And so now let's just go through and add those sounds. So I'll start with the player. The player has, I think, three or four sounds. Let's see. We have death, hit, jump, land. So I'll just click on the player node. I'll add an audio stream player. And I'm just going to duplicate this a few times because we have four different sounds. So I'll just hit Command D to duplicate. So now I've got four sounds. I'm going to rename these to match the code. So I have the jump sound. I have the land sound. I have the death sound. And I have the um, hit sound. Uh, and so now I have to actually add the sounds here. So when I click on the audio stream player, I look at the inspector and go to the stream. And I go to load here and go to audio. And so for player jump, we're adding that here. And we can play with the volume or the pitch scale. Mm -hmm. We don't want to turn on autoplay because uh, we want it to play when the code triggers it, not when the scene starts. So we can pretty much leave all these settings alone unless we find that it's too loud, in which case we can lower the volume. If it's too quiet, then we should go back and edit the sound. Remember, we don't want to push the sounds above 0 dB because we'll get some distortion and it won't sound very good. And we could change the pitch if we want to, but we probably won't need to do that. Um, so then let's do the same thing. We have the land sound. Just click and load. Go to audio and find player land. And for the death sound, we're going to load audio and find player death. And for the hit sound, same thing. Find the uh, player hit right there. 
And so now we can uncomment the parts of our code that play these sounds. So again, I would just click on the script for the player and just scroll through and find the sounds, or I can use Command F and search for a sound. So here's the land sound. I'm just gonna take out the comment there, and then I'll go to the next sound. Here's the jump sound. And then let's keep going. Here's the death sound. So I'll take that out. And then I don't know if I have a hit sound in here. Um, I may just add it. So there's a, there's a function for the enemy collision. It looks like I forgot to add the sound here. So I'm just going to put dollar sign hit sound dot play. So it's very easy to add that code in as well. Um, if you want to do that, uh, let me know. We can add more sounds in. Uh, but it looks like that I forgot to add that in the original script. Um, so there's our player. Let's go over to the enemy. And again, I'm just going to add the sounds and then edit the script. So I'll add an audio stream player. I'll uh, add the death sound and uh, add another audio stream player and add the hit sound. So for the enemy death sound, I'll go to the stream and load and find enemy death. And then same thing for the enemy hit sound. And now we just have to find it in the code. So I'm going to click on the scroll here. And here's my enemy code. And here's the death sound here. And let's see if we can find, here's the hit sound here. And I think that's going to be it. Yeah, the sound has two matches. So there's our enemy. And so we just have two more things, the apple and the life. So I'll go to the apple. Same process, just add an audio stream player. And this one is called collected sound. So this is more generic because we have different types of items. Um, but we can put different sounds in here, and the different items will play the different sounds. So I'm going to load our Apple Collected. And then I'm going to click on the script for the Apple. And here we see collected sound.play. Uh, so I'll just take out this comment again. And so now that should play. And we have one more sound, the life. So I'll add in the audio stream player one more time. And this is going to have the same title. So we don't actually have to change the code because this shares the same script as the Apple. So all I have to do here is add in the life sound, which is right here, life collected. OK, so we've connected all of these sounds. Let's see if we actually hear them when we play the level. So I have the background music, I have the level start, and now I have some sounds associated with the different components. So let's see if we hear those sounds. OK, so that was the start sound and the land sound. It was quite loud, so I might turn that down. Oh, that was the apple sound. The apple sound is not good for the apple. I'm not going to revise it, but uh, I would want to go back and find a different sound for that. The hit sound is pretty good. Let's see if I can kill a snake. That's pretty good. So that's sounding pretty good. There's a couple sounds that I would want to fix. Um, so the sounds I would probably go back and fix would be uh, the apple sound doesn't really make sense for an apple. I'd probably get like sort of like a crunchy sound or something like that. If I wanted to do that, I would just go back to JFXer, create a new sound, and then just replace it. You know, I'd go over to Apple and just replace the stream here. Uh, but for time's sake, I'm just going to uh, skip that for now. Um, so now, uh, now that I've got all the sounds that I want to use, we want to do some documentation, of course. Um, if you're on a PC, you could do the Xbox game bar, and you could probably pretty easily record the internal sound on your computer and make a video and you know put that on, on the open lab. If you're on a Mac, recording the internal sound is quite difficult. Um, so I don't think it's worth Doing that, instead, what we can do is just po post the sounds that we're using on the open lab. So what I would do for the sound assignment is uh, go to the open lab, 
and add a new post and say game sounds here and then uh, we could just uh, let's add a category and call this sound and so here what we can do is we can either link to the sounds that we're using uh, from different sources or we can upload the sounds that we've created so I'll say uh, here are the sound effects that I created for my game. And then if I want to upload audio, I just click on this and I type in audio. And I can click this here. And then I can go upload and I'll go to my game and go to audio. And then I can upload any of these files. So like for my player jump, I can click there, click open. And then we might want to label this. Let's see if I can label it. So I can add a caption and I can say player jump. And we should be able to play this. So we can add the sounds that way. Uh, it's, it's a little hard to document, obviously. Uh, otherwise, you could like take a video of your computer or something like that if you, if you want to do better documentation. But the simplest way is just to upload our sounds like this. Um, for some of my sounds, like the background music, I actually have a link. So I, I bookmarked this sound here. And so I could just use a link for this. I could copy this and say, here's my background music and put a link here. Um, I don't want to embed this. Uh, it's trying to embed it, but I'm going to say convert to link and just leave that there. And so if I take a look at this, We'll see here are the sound effects and here's the player jump. I just wrote play, not player. Uh, and here's the background music and so we can look at that. And so that's re really all we need. You can just add in all the sound effects that you created uh, and then the background music. If you do wanna try creating documentation where you have a video that includes the sound, of course, that's a good thing to try to do. Um, and there is a there's a video about how to do that in the documentation section, I think. Uh, I think, yeah, if you look at this video, how to record your screen with internal audio on Mac. So if you want to try it on the Mac, you can do that. Uh, on Windows, it's pretty easy. So you could try it on Windows as well. Um, it's not really, it's, it's setting it up is, is kind of challenging. So I'm not going to like require that, of course. Uh, but if you want to do that, you have, you have that option. Um, and so of course, once you have everything set up, so I've only got one sound here, but you guys are going to have multiple sounds. So you should post all of your sounds here, but I don't need to go through that process. It'd be pretty boring to, to do that over and over again. So I'll just go ahead and publish. And of course, when you're done publishing, you'll view the post and you'll put that on, on the open lab. Um, so that's everything I'm going to cover. I'll stop the video here.